Hello, and welcome back to About the Albums. Or if this is your first one, welcome to uh, About the Albums. Today we're talking about the album Bloodwick, um, which came out originally, uh, like the last album, in May of 2013. Uh, a couple of things to bring up here, though. Real quick, for anyone who has still been watching, um, where the hell is it? The button? The button is still wiggle waggling down here. So the button's fine. Um, my light, I got a stand for it now, so it's going to be a little higher. And I think it might help with some of the lighting effects, maybe. You tell me. And some rearranging in, in the area, in the, the studio. Not room, but studio. Uh, basically, I've now got a little space here. Um, so hopefully the camera and stuff, and I don't know, it's a little further back. I realize the shot changes every once in a while just because I have to reset things up. But uh, uh, the other thing is that I haven't done one of these in uh, a few months, which may be noticeable by my hair. I just kind of record a bunch of these at the same time, and then I kind of edit them. and um, All kinds of weird dates going on of when remasters come out, when then these come out, whatever, and then all that, you know, and then when I originally did the stuff, and then, uh, when I originally recorded this, I talk about the stuff that's coming out in the future now for this video. It's a, it's a whole thing for, I don't know, time travel buffs to figure out. For anyone else, um, sorry I bored you at the beginning again. I should save that for the end, but I never do. Bloodwick doesn't have a whole lot to really, uh, explain, though, I don't think. There's not any really overarching thing here. I just made another album because I was still making music and I was enjoying it. And, um, I made some more, and, uh, this is more of it, so, uh, hopefully you enjoy, uh, and, uh, let's just, let's get into it. Sam's strange and wonderful adventure is, uh, for some reason one that I keep thinking is called Sam's strange and wonderful journey. I don't know why I keep thinking journey instead of adventure, but every time I look, it still says adventure, so that's on me. It's an instrumental song, um, and it's, uh, kind of just a thing I threw together. I sort of made up the shit as I went along. One of those... Uh, I've done a few of those. Uh, I gotta remember to hold the microphone a bit further away and or not talk as loud into it, because I forget that if I'm too loud at it, um, the way I have it set, it'll clip the shit out of it. And that's bad. That sounds like ass, and not like good ass, not like sweet ass. Makes it sound like shitty ass. Shitty ass. So. Uh, it's just kind of supposed to be this long thing of like different sections. There's the beginning part, and it kind of goes into the second part where it's kind of playing around with strings and trying to find uh, cool things to do there a little bit. Uh, and it kind of like slows down some, and then it's uh, eventually kind of goes into the last little final bits. There's not really actually a tale there, or if there was some kind of story I thought of in my head after making it, I've long since forgotten it. Um, but it's supposed to be sort of open ended to make you kind of create your own adventure and think of what it makes you think of. I just put my name in it because I made it and because it needs a name. I think just calling it like the strange and wonderful adventure sounds too generic. So I put my name in there and that makes it less generic because I mean, it's an incredibly unique name, Sam. No one else in the world has it, but I, uh, there are many like it, but this one is mine. Uh, so that's that's really all there is for the song. It's neat to have some of the instruments in there to try out some different things. And uh, it's kind of an interesting way to start off the album. Plus, um, I, I also remembered to put in the weird like applause thing at the end for some reason. I don't know why I bothered to throw that in there. I guess I just wanted an excuse to use that tone, but I have it now. And yes, this I forgot this kind of gets heavy in my hand depending on how I hold it. So I have to rest it on the shelf that is my gut. I have, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I have this, the super ab isn't good for much, but, um, it is good for being a, uh, you know, an impromptu shelving unit for many things. One of which is this. If 
Mysterious Streets uh, is a song where I basically I just played these piano parts. I just kind of kept adding um, piano parts to it. And there's a drum beat, I guess. Um, and so I just kind of had that go and I kept adding things to it. And I believe what had happened was I originally recorded it as just that because I didn't have words for it yet. And um, I know if something happens every once in a while, if my keyboard is off for too long, or I think it might actually be if like the power trips or I unplug it, um, the memory and stuff in there just like wipes. Um, and so it doesn't remember the song that you had in there. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to happen or what. But um, what uh, what happened was... Uh, as I recorded that, because I was going to do that later, and then because that like went out of there, that was kind of the contingency. It was like, well, I don't lose all that then. And so what I did was I just kind of played it along on my computer and then sang with it. And then I think I tried to line up my singing from the one track where I'm listening to the music off the computer, and the other track was me um, you know, just using the audio that existed with that. And so it sounds not as clean as it would have, not that it sounds super clean anyways because of the way I record things. Um, or at least it did at the time. Um, who knows? It might be different in the future. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it didn't sound that good. Um, it just, it noticeably sounded like a little bit, like, slightly worse than usual. Um, but the, the, the you know, the parts are kind of catchy, and I just kind of repeated the same, you know, thing over and over. I just kept replacing one word. Um, and I don't know. I guess I liked it as a short, catchy song, uh, to kind of throw in there. I think it serves an okay purpose. I think it sounds cool. Um, it doesn't overstay its welcome for what it's doing, so it doesn't get crazy repetitive or anything. Um, and it, it ends um, without going on into, you know, too long either for just playing music or anything and that kind of... It just kind of came together as a nice, short, little thing that... Um, it, I don't know. It was... I thought it was good. I like it. What do you, what do you think? Also, I'd like to say it's like, oh yeah, it's like Street Fighter or something, right? Furious Streets. But it's more just about, you know, trying to be like, out on the streets in general. Very cliche, mean streets. I don't think they ever talk about the nice streets. I mean, the only time they say that is if you're like, you know, living there and it's more about the people on the street than the street itself what what's the deal with that i don't know i shouldn't ask that here because that's my other show but um is this on i really hope this isn't on so i can redo this Cliff is about uh, essentially looking like off the edge of a cliff, contemplating jumping off of a cliff to know if uh, your idea of God exists. It's kind of uh, was still in my, you know, phase of look at me, I'm an atheist. I was very, um, I mean, I still am one, but I'm still, I was very much like, I wanted that to be part of my identity, I guess, because, you know, I kind of grew up around a bunch of people who believed in you know christian christianity christian stuff that kind of god whatever and so it was you know a thing of like yeah like it's someone wanting to like jump and it's like but they're afraid and it's like they shouldn't be afraid because they should be saved but they're not exactly sure that they believe that enough to the point where they're willing to jump um and the idea of do you truly believe that so it's kind of based on those things and it's um so it's kind of a dark song in that sense. Um, it's really just about that. And it's, uh, I kind of like the little thing of like having the voice say the, the word before the, the the verse and chorus parts. I kind of like that other voice in there doing that. That was neat. Um, and uh, 
neat. And the song isn't too long either. Again, it's one of those where it doesn't like go on forever and ever. Sounds interesting. I think that um, with the overlapping of stuff, it sounds a little strange. I don't think I got it exact on the layering part of it. But uh, other than that, it's still, it's still pretty cool. I think it works perfectly fine for what I'm doing with it. And, um, you know, I could do a lot worse. I have done a lot worse. And I'm sure in the future I will do a lot worse. So that's Cliff. It's about the, the, the geographical uh, occurrence, not a person's name. I felt the longing of a thousand years. I cried a whole ocean's worth of tears. This is worse than my biggest fears. Now that I've lost the one most dear. The song Departure, as the title suggests, is about uh, departing uh, from from life into death. Uh, it's going into the afterlife. Um, the idea is that, uh, from the singer's perspective, that person's um, significant other or love of their life or whatever has, uh, has died, uh, and they uh, are, you know, just can't really stand it. Um, and they end up actually, because you know, they have so many memories with them in the house where they live together, they end up just burning down the entire house. And then they're sitting in the ashes of their house with a gun to their head. They're going to kill themselves. And they end up not doing it. Um, so, yeah, it's a pretty dark theme for that. Um, and obviously I can't really speak from experience because I have never, you know... Um, been in a relationship for a long time and then and then uh had them die and then uh burned down my house I never burned down my house um in general nor have I had a gun against my head uh mine or anyone else's or you know so so I I obviously am not going from experience but I thought it was a I thought it was an interesting idea um and uh this the idea of like kind of like trying to move on and keep going um, uh, instead of just you know letting it destroy you um, even though it nearly does so that's um, that's departure and uh, funny enough uh, it is not really a departure from a lot of my stuff because a lot of it is very depressing and sad so did I say it was departure already? I did. It was. It is. Hello. Salt the Slimy Bastards is about um, putting salt on snails and slugs to kill them. Um, and, uh, coming up with words that rhyme with snails and slug snail and slug snails and slugs uh i also just kind of thought it was neat that doing the whole like the drum and bass like uh interlude parts whatever between there and the part just like the drums and the bass kind of shining a bit and then like building up between those so that kind of the louder than like going back to like that and like I don't know I, I thought that was uh that was cool I like the sound of that and ha I have the effect on my voice to make my voice sound cool with this because I don't really have a naturally cool sounding voice like the way I want it to like or I wanted it to be for that so I think it worked out pretty well to do it that way um I just don't know uh if it was entirely effective but that's up to you the listener do decide and uh, that's pretty much all I guess I really had to say about it is that it was um, it was fun to do something a little different in that sense to have that kind of formula to it that format and um, again just kind of a goofy concept of like yeah it's just salt the slimy bastards and slimy bastards are snails and slugs and I guess you could look into that deeper but um, the thing in my head was actually just snails and slugs um so it's funny that sometimes, you know, I very rarely I feel like do I make a song and intentionally I'm like, this has like, there's something symbolic to it. 
most of the time I'm pretty straight with a lot of that stuff, pretty straightforward and blunt. And so you can look into it a lot, but um, there's a lot of ways you can look into a lot of things. Uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of what you do a lot with art is you interpret it whichever way you'd like. Um, and you can do the same thing with my songs, even though they're not good enough to really call that. Um, you know, they're they're art like. They have um, art like qualities. I just don't know if you could scientifically put them into the art category. See what I did there? It's called a joke. Or a joke like. But I don't know if you could scientifically group it into the joke category. 220 is a song about Battlestar Galactica. Because, uh, you know that comment I made before on another one of these? I'm a fat fucking nerd. It's true. Uh, so I watched the, the reboot Battlestar Galactica series. Um, I think I started watching it with a friend. I think it was because we had, like, actually a DVD left here. Somebody else's. Um, one of my brothers, I think, left a DVD here. Of, like, season, like, three or something. So my friend and I, like, watched that. And then he started getting, like, the, from, like, the library, like, you can get, like, one thing at a time, you can, like, he just kept getting, like, the discs for it, we were watching that periodically, we went through that, and we ended up watching all of that, um, and then, um, later on Netflix, I found they had, like, the old Battlestar Galactica on there, so I watched all that, and that's where, like, the narration and stuff is from that, that I do in the song in the beginning and end, um, and so it's just about the general premise of the show, um, and, uh, which, if you don't know about it, listen to the song, or better yet, watch the show. Uh, and uh, it's, um, yeah, there's a lot of references to things going on in there, kind of. And 220 is the, I believe, I'm trying to remember too, because it has been a while. So the part where I'm a, I'm a fat nerd, I'm also um, a dumbass. But I think 220 was the number of surviving, uh, I don't know if the number of surviving people or surviving ships. 220 was something to do with that, or or something like that, right? Um, I can't remember if it was 220 people or that was like the ships uh, from Earth that survived. But um, it's, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a cool thing. I was just like way into Battlestar Galactica at the time. And so I put together a song about it and I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, also, I just realized this might look a little awkward. I don't know how well you can see my, my pocket down here when I put my hand in my pocket. But I've got jeans on now, so instead of having shorts on that dock, really don't feel like they fit with this. Um, I have jeans on, and now because of that, if the camera does catch these, like, it won't be weird. What is this if I do this? Don't, uh, don't get this age-gated, everybody. I kept it clean. Except for the language. I'll only partially understand if it's age-gated. Pull the strings is uh, about someone getting this chance to essentially control the fate of the world through the use of a magical guitar. You can do good with it or evil with it. It's kind of like having a superpower. It's just this guitar that essentially controls humanity. And um, I think this is actually where um, I totally forgot about this again, kind of until just now listening to this and some of the other songs. I believe originally when I was making this album, I kind of started out with the intent of doing a lot of stuff with guitar tones and making it like all about using just guitars. And this was a, a lead song like on that. Um, and then I abandoned that because I couldn't get enough of those. And uh, that's why this has a lot of guitar. And I don't think there's any bass in this song either. It's like guitars and drums. It's all distorted, that gu guitar tone. Um, and that's okay. Um, it just doesn't sound as varied as I would like. I don't think there was enough stuff for me to do with those tones on the keyboard like I originally thought. And eventually I just canned it and didn't do it. I didn't go through with it. But um, there's still some remnants of that in certain songs. And this is definitely one of them. Um, 
So, uh, that's why this, uh, album also is pretty guitar heavy for some of the songs, because it was around that same time I was doing that, and most of those ended up here. Um, I think the other one I mentioned before, which ended up one of the other albums, um, what is it? Assorted Sam? I think it's on Assorted Sam, was the one where I have singing stuff. The song Pull the String, or Pull the String, the song, um, Fighting Spirit, I think it is? I can't remember. Is it Fighting Spirit? Champion, that's the song, Champion. I should look things up and get them ready before I start recording these segments. Champion, I believe, was the song. Um, and it, I didn't think it was good enough to fit on the album, and it was kind of left over, and so it ended up on there. Um, I believe that was also part of the guitar thing. So um, that's uh, actually a, that's an interesting tidbit that I didn't really... I don't think I conveyed it in a, a very interesting Lee, but I'm also really bad at speaking. Uh, I have terrible posture. Body language uh, is just foreign to me. So you get what you pay for, which is free. Except I guess you pay for your internet. Um, and if time is money, man, you're getting ripped off hard here, dude. Sucks to be you, but it could be worse. You could be me. I mean, you have to try pretty hard to, to be this, you know, this, this, but... A man and his time machine is about a man and his time machine. Um, basically, it's about uh, a man, I know, sexist. Um, and uh, he uh, basically builds a time machine because he just... He, he hates his life and who he is and how things have been going for him. So he basically can't really make friends or anything. He's having a hard time fitting in with people. So he creates a time machine and tries to find somewhere in time uh, where he'll fit in, where he can find, you know, friends and companionship and 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 the like. And, uh, and finds out that no matter where he goes, no matter what time he's in, um... He just doesn't fit in. Just you know, things aren't going better for him. He just he just can't catch a break. Um, it, the problem is just him, um, and that's pretty much it. It's just uh, it's kind of a sad song. It is a little bit like a Twilight Zone episode of sorts. Um, not a whole lot like one, maybe one of the not so good ones. Um, but you know, at least it's better than the ones that are like, oh, it was Earth the whole time. Or something. I feel like there were a lot of those. Sliver is actually I think the first um I think the first actual love song I, I wrote and, and did and put out there. That was actually like a actual love song for someone. Um who I guess I don't think I told them that I love them yet. <laughs> but um that was kind of I kind of I made that and I put that out there and that was sort of my hint. I eventually said so. Um, and, you know, we dated, and, you know, as so things, you know, things, things of that, on that story uh, get, get better, and then much worse, so, uh, stay tuned for that, but, uh, this song, uh, the beginning and end things are just parts of it where I have an effect on it to make it echoey, and it's like, kind of like the effect of playing part of it and having it, like, kind of echo out when it stops, um, and I did like that I had multiple different voices doing it, um, it was a way for it to feel like, you know, it's just the idea of, like, you know, love is a... It's just the idea of, yeah, like, being a thing where it kind of, like, work its way underneath your skin, and then it's just kind of, like, stuck there, um, was the thought. And, um, I actually recorded two of these. Um, 
the one version, uh, I think I had a slightly different variation on the lines. Uh, cause I think here I have like for like, uh, for a fool like me is the line, but in the other version I had, or it was with a fool like me or for a fool like me. I have to remember which line it is, but instead of fool, um, in the other version I said jerk, the version also had less of instruments on top of it and less voices on top of it. I think it was just, uh, the one voice, um, the main lower kind of voice on it. So I didn't really feel like there was a need to keep both. Um, and I kind of like with the other voices on there too, and the instrumentation, it makes it not sound, uh, as cringe inducing as say, uh, just a, like a straight up, like heartfelt love song where it's very like raw and emotional. And I feel like that would be like, e that would come off rough. Um, especially for me, someone who isn't even good at singing in the first place or expressing emotions. Um, but that is, that is sliver. And, uh, uh, I, I hope that nowhere I, that did I ever accidentally call it silver because those words look very similar at a glance until you realize that they're not, uh, with a look. That's the difference. You, you want to, you want, you don't want to glance at it. You want to look at it as you don't, you don't find typos at a glance. You find it at a look that can be categorized by science. DK is a song about uh, dead bodies. Dead bodies that just naturally decay over time. About the flesh rotting off. Organs turning to mush. The circle of life happening as things eat you when you die. It's kind of gross. But it's a cool song. Um... Something about it being morbid makes it even cooler to me. Um, I think the way I sang it actually came off pretty well. Um, one of the few times where I'm like, yeah, my voice worked for this. It did, like, stuff I wanted it to do. I'm um, just kind of like the more whaley kind of voice on, like, the parts where I wanted my voice to be more powerful. And then, like, the kind of grittier, um, you know, softer singing and the lower tones. They came together pretty nicely. I think I actually originally did have another version of this too, um, where essentially I was, I think I had like maybe less effects on it or less, uh, less, um, vocals. So there were less tracks, uh, layered. And I think it like the voices and like, or some of the music, some something came better, like through a little bit better. Something came better a little bit through her. I'm good at speaking. But uh, I ended up just not keeping that either because I don't need two. I think this one just works better and it's already part of this album. So I guess I, I decided eventually over the time that this was the good one. You know, this take, you're one of the good ones. Of the two versions I had, you are the good one. So, um, I don't know. I think I pointed here because my computer's down there. That's where I just listened to it. So, more fun facts. I also have a chair right down here. So I can sit down and go on my computer there that's sitting on my mini fridge. I could move the camera around and show you, but I don't want to readjust it again. So I'm not going to. Just trust me that things are set up the way I say so. Because I said so. And that's decay for you. Um, not to be confused with your teeth. Because they do it, just they do it a different way. Uh, unless they're part of your body, you know, being dead. You're, they're part of your corpse. Then I guess they would probably decay in a similar fashion. They would count as part of that corpse. So, I may or may not be right or wrong on a technicality or not. Decay. Not to be confused with Donkey Kong. There. I did it. I, I said. I said. I said it. Fuck me.
HD is a song about Humpty Dumpty, and I tried not to say the name Humpty Dumpty in the song, but there's a part near the end where you can kind of hear me saying it sort of, but not super clearly, and it's because when I was recording, it was just kind of a reaction I had, and I was like, do I want to say it or don't I? And so I had it in there, and it's like, it's pretty quiet. It's like, if it picks up, then you can hear it, and if not, you can't, and it's kind of somewhere in the middle of that. So if you can pick it up, you don't necessarily know that's what I'm saying, but you might think it's what I'm saying. So that's what I did. <laughs> and I just thought it would be funny to make this like serious kind of song sounding a lot like Humpty Dumpty and about how he like, you know, he, he like died. Um, he like fell off this wall and like just fell into pieces and then died. And I just thought it was really funny. <laughs> I think it was extra funny that knowing it's about Humpty Dumpty, and that as having the line, he chose to die. <laughs> it's just... I don't know something about that's still really funny so um that was that was mostly what was behind Humpty Dumpty and the music itself was just kind of a cool like riff that I found out and did and I liked it and I had to have uh, a song on top of it and usually songs have words and uh if I want to sing I probably want to sing words usually not all the time but usually um and when I do that I um you know I like to have some kind of a concept or theme or something. And this happened. Humpty Dumpty happened. Never forget Humpty Dumpty. Big Guns in Space is about big guns in space. It's a uh, space battles, having all different kinds of weaponry and cool sci-fi movies and shows and maybe even real space. Mostly just listing off weapons and talking about being shot. It's it's a pretty simple song. It's a bit repetitive, but I really liked the music in it and um, it's got a certain like power to it. Uh, it's it's uh, kind of bombastic. I would say. I know I said it strangely, but that's something I would say, depending on, you know, actually not depending on, regardless of. Regardless of how I would say it. Am I speaking too fast? I feel like if I talk too quickly, you can't understand what I'm saying, and I feel like I can't understand what I'm saying later. How does one, how does one have a show about saying things, be this bad at saying things? Like, how the fuck do you fuck? Asking for a friend. And it's really, there's really not much more to the song than that. Uh, it's just, you know, when Big Guns in Space. There's not a whole lot to say. Other than I thought it sounded cool. Still think it sounds cool. And hopefully, you all think it sounds cool too. Doing the world a favor is a song about suicide. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, the idea of like kind of writing the song about like, yeah, I'm going to kill myself. I wasn't going to. I just had thoughts like that before. Um, I think everyone has thoughts of it. And uh, it's a serious thing. And uh, it's something that I've never done personally. Um, but... Uh, you know, um, so it's about that, and the idea is that I would be doing the world a favor if I did it. Um, that, uh, you know, I would not be wasting resources and, you know, people's time and people worrying about me and everything, and I would just be gone. Um, that was kind of the, the idea behind it. I also had the, the double voice thing going on, which I like the way it sounds, but there's a few spots. You can tell, I mean, obviously it's kind of a longer song. I did um, multiple takes. And I didn't ever get it exactly the song the exact same way two times on him. So, like, I got close. Um, closer than I did on, you know, like, uh, Send the Robot. But um, it, it's um, still some spots there you can tell I kind of, like, I get out of the groove on it. It sounds okay, 
but it's obvious I didn't mean to do it on purpose. Uh, at least I think so. Um, the song itself, the music on it's like, I think is really cool. Um, so I still really like it. And at the end, I think there may have even been a few like tracks, like really quiet vocals or vocals you can't hear that well. I think there's like some slight harmonies in the back on other vocal tracks there, but you can't really hear it. And those are accidental if they are there. Um, if they're audible because I, those were higher, uh, you know, octaves, I think. I tried to go up and I kind of lost a note on the one, but it made an interesting harmony, but you can barely hear it. So it's very like washed out in the mix. It always has been. Um, that's it. That's the final song in the album. And I like the way the song ends too. It's kind of a little mysterious almost. Yeah. And in general, this album, I think is pretty good. Um, I liked Bloodwood quite a bit. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I mean, like, maybe there's a few songs that I'm like, eh, whatever on them. But most of them I, th I actually liked, uh, I think, I think we're pretty good. I still like them. And I think it's a solid album. And, uh, and I mean, that's coming from someone as biased as me. So anyone else might, you know, probably not agree, but they might agree. And I'll take it. And, uh, thanks everybody for hanging out and letting me talk at your face with my face and uh, if you like that i'll see you in the next one i'll have some more face-to-face -face talking and listening action th then so the artwork for bloodwick um, I really just touched up the stuff, which looks, it looks a little wavier here in the remastered artwork. Because um, I tried to trace around that font, because I don't think I had it anymore. Um, and uh, the idea, like, what's the name, too? It's like Bloodwick. It was supposed to be like the, a candle. Like you can see, the wick of the candle. And I have like that upside down triangle thing, which is sort of a theme of mine that I've been doing to kind of give some style and um, to make it look like some lighting stuff. Um, shimmering light, almost. It was, it was just a kind of a slapdash thing that I liked. And um, ended up putting the apostrophe there because I liked the triangle up there and I liked how it kind of split up blood and wick. Um, also making it almost like one word. So I made it kind of interesting. So I just left the apostrophe up there. Uh, uh, for the, for the style of it. So I kind of like that. Um, and yeah, it really, it's, it's, it's almost like a blood, like wax of the candle too. It looks like it's all red, but I don't know. It's the name Bloodwick sounded cool and it didn't really have anything to do with anything. I just made this cool candle picture. I actually don't remember if I thought that of the name first or I did the picture first and then did the name, but, um, that's all, that's all I really get for that. So hopefully that's somewhat interesting and not um, completely uninteresting for the artwork. Gee, aren't you glad you stuck around for a banana? Wait, what? <laughs>